Hello again, I'm Matthew from TheWetPen.com, and I think that this is about the most gorgeous nib that I own. Let me tell you a little bit about it. A couple of months ago, this pen arrived from India. It's a Vizier Claro. Vizier is a young Indian company, just three years old, part of the new school of Indian pen makers, making pens that are more typical of Western style pens, generally resin and acrylic with cartridge converters, rather than the hand-turned ebonite eyedropper filled pens of the old school. My pen arrived in a lacquered wooden box with the company logo on top. One of Vizier's most popular pens is a large red model called the Bordeaux, and this pen is smaller but made from the same resin. But I didn't buy the pen because of the resin. The body design is simple and elegant with no bands or engraving, and a plain smooth clip. The only marking on the pen is the company name printed near the end of the pen. It's hard to see in this soft light, but the resin is slightly translucent, which looks really nice. Again, the clip doesn't have any branding. The cap unscrews in about two and a half turns to reveal the star of the show, this stunning hand-engraved nib. The base of this was a medium German Yovo nib, and it's been hand engraved with a classical floral pattern. When I bought this pen, it cost about $140, but now it's possible to buy the nib unit separately. They cost about $100 on the US website, but it probably won't surprise you to find that it costs less if you buy it in India, although only about $15 less in this case. If you've seen these nibs for sale here or from Magna Carta or from Lotus Pens, you might be surprised to discover that all of these nibs are engraved by one man. This man, Gaurav Kapoor, who goes by Engraver India on Instagram. And he's a jeweler and engraving artist from Ambala City, about 200 kilometers north of New Delhi, near the foothills of the Himalayas. Even if you don't buy one of his nibs, I'd really recommend checking out his Instagram feed. His engraved nibs are amazing. I spoke with him one night about making these nibs, and he said that a single nib like mine can take up to six hours to make. First etching the design in the material, and then carving it out. Mr. Kapoor has been mastering his engraving skills for 16 years now starting at the age of 18, though his artistic skills reach back even further to his father, who was also an engraver and an enamel painter. To me, this is a really wonderful skill and art form, and I don't know anywhere outside of India that you can reliably get nibs like this. Okay, let's move on to the rest of the pen. The grip section of this pen has a concave hourglass shape and it's nice and comfortable to me, although I admit that I'm not terribly picky about grip shape. The cap threads and the step down from the body to the section are both gentle and comfortable. If I unscrew this grip section, you can see that inside there's a standard Schmidt International Converter. And of course, that works just fine. Nothing unusual there. The pen is large enough that, in my hand, it's a good size for writing without being posted. Technically, the cap can be posted. It doesn't post deeply, not even deep enough to hold the cap on straight, but Surprisingly, the material is grippy enough that it does stay on. That said, I suspect that posting this cap will result in scratches on the body of the pen and maybe a cracked cap eventually, and it really makes the pen top-heavy and uncomfortable for writing, so I wouldn't recommend it. Speaking of writing, let me show you how this thing writes. When I got this nib, I was a little concerned that 
all of the work on the top of this nib might have caused some sort of misalignment with the tines, or warping, or strain hardening, or something that would affect how it writes. But in fact, it's a wonderful writer. It feels just like any other well-polished Yovo nib. I'm sure that it really helps that Mr. Kapoor is also a fan of fountain pens, and knows what he's doing in that regard as well. For an idea of how big this pen is overall, here it is next to a Lamy All-Star, and a Diplomat Arrow. Then here's a Twisby Eco, and a Lamy Studio. And it's a bit longer and wider than all of these, but not a whole lot. So this pen is pretty nice, but the nib is truly a work of art. The pen is comfortable and feels well made, and the nib and nib unit have been smooth and reliable with good flow. I think that's about it for this pen, but if you have any questions still, feel free to ask me down in the comment section. And that's it. Stay safe out there, everyone, and enjoy your pens and ink.